you up. You gotta die! Intruder alert! Intruder! <laughs> oh, man. Okay. And with that, it's I... time for us to intrude oh. into the audience's eye sockets, I guess. Hello. Bad, bad intro, but welcome to Tap Haven, <laughs> episode 10. I believe, but I'm not quite sure because if you are now watching the VODs, you'll notice I released episode four, and you'll notice that in the first five seconds of that episode, we call it episode three. So we'll see what number we're at uh, when I'm processing them because now I'm I'm not sure. We in the double digits, y'all. We are. We, we are in it. the double digits, and with that, we have a super. Special episode, although I don't know how special it's going to be considering our track record with them, uh, but we'll, we'll see. So Ooh. we were all able to be a part of the Flaviar Whiskey Advent Calendar for 2024, I guess, was what it was, or 2023. I can't remember what they did it, but yeah, Nat, Nat has 23 the box. To 24. 23 to 24. So we have, and there were actually a few different versions of this. I think they had the the lost art of distillation, and they had another one. Mm -hmm. But we got the lost art of distillation, and uh, the box is pretty cool. It's but very pretty. Essentially, we're going to go back and forth, trying some of the whiskeys from the advent calendar and trying some other whiskeys. We're not going to stick fully to this every single episode. We'll probably go episode on, episode off type of deal. But today, and, uh, we're starting it. For those of you that only listen, you might want to check out the video. Because <laughs> amidst all that talking, I almost died. I, I almost <laughs> lost my headphones. I slammed the box into my face. And uh, I'm not picking this thing back up. I'm putting it on the desk. I, that, that was Solid. too much Solid. chaos. And Eric, do you want to go over what was included inside this uh, box before we jump into this? Do you mean like which whiskeys are included inside no, of this box or like, like the what artwork? came with it? OK, I'll do it then. So each of these boxes came with, I believe, and I could be counting wrong, but it comes with 24 vials of some form of uh, whiskey and or bourbon, as well as a uh, Tasting notes, little booklet, and two Glen Karen. Wait, how did you? How did you get those? Where? Where, where is you're that? only getting one? I got two. What? What? No, don't do this. I got one. I got two. I got two. I got, you got two. Wait, where did you get the? I still haven't gotten okay. any. Okay, okay, okay. No, 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 no. Like Anthony, shut up. Anthony, shut up. Anthony, <laughs> Anthony, shut the. God, Anthony, Sorry. just go, just go. It's in the. It's in the big pocket in the middle. Look at the middle. No, 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 don't, don't. Eric, don't you're there. opening it wrong. The no. Not the top, not the top, <laughs> not the top. No, 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 stop, stop, stop. I didn't you're open it. Break everything I didn't like open it. Time. I didn't open it. I didn't Eric, open Eric, it. Eric, 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 stop, stop. No, oh, it's, it's, stop. It's, screen, okay, screen. audience, it literally says start, start here. here. I'm, I'm, right I'm here. starting here. I got it. We now understand. Yes, 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 yes. And you pull it open, and that's the little pocket that holds the Glen Cairn glasses. Okay. Uh, there are definitely, yeah, I see the booklet. I haven't unlocked any of this, by the way, so this is all new. This there are, perfect. there are definitely two Glen Cairn glasses in here. Okay. How do you get I these was, out? I do. Okay. So something to go ahead and send to play the art. Hopefully we won't like, hopefully this will be an enjoyable experience past the, the, uh, bourbon and whiskey. Um, Make the foam just a little out. looser, just a little looser. Well, it is, it is time. stressful. It is time. stressful oh. trying Again. to get something out. Oh, oh, he's going to get something. Okay, y'all really got to at least watch the beginning of this one because <laughs> you should have just seen Eric yank his first one out. <laughs> he was just like, <laughs> we, the first flavor we got uh, came in a thing like this mm -hmm. with what looks like coasters a fancy top mm -hmm, mm -hmm. okay mm -hmm. pull on this tab doesn't move eric yanks as hard as he can and this concrete coaster flies across his room and shatters. <laughs> it, it did it did and he that. hasn't learned a thing because he just yanked 
that Glenn Karen out he could have just ripped the stem off. That's true. He could have ripped the stem off. So yeah, um, I don't know how strong the glass is. Honestly, it's, it seems pretty uh thick for glass making. I don't know. I'm not I'm not a glass blower. But um yeah, it was very nerve wracking trying to get these things out of the box. I can I can see that. Now uh, oh, they have nice little etchings. That's kind of yeah, cool. Yeah, it has like the it has like the little Flaviar symbol on it. Oh, it even feels good. It's not one of those where you rub over it. It's like, oh, that's sandpaper. Ow, buy skin. Yeah, you can actually see the um. So the Glen Cairn glass is like the company is the Glen Cairn glass type of deal, and so they 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 have the official official Glen Cairn glasses. I was about to say, I don't yeah. know if you can see it, but on the bottom they have the etching from the original company, so it's a a real Glen Cairn. I'm doing a terrible job, but anyway, yeah, it's, yeah, it's, it's hard to it's, hard to see. You can see it when we look. Uh, so I'm actually holding a normal Glen Cairn next to it. And so I have the two, and yeah, no, y'all are completely right. It actually feels slightly heavier, but that could just be. No, it's, no, it's slightly heavier. heavier. Yeah, it's, it's heavier. slightly heavier than the Glen Cairn that I have. She's a um, bit. Yeah, she's got I'm a also a baldy on there. I'm also really glad that we just opened this because uh, apparently I did a really bad job at cleaning my Glen Cairn, so I'm not using that today. Disgusting. <laughs> it's it is disgusting. Reprehensible. It's a. Uh, it's it's yes. Eric, oh God. So now are we doing number one yeah we're I doing presume? number number one Ooh. um and funnily, funnily enough so i usually for the audience's benefit i usually do a good bit of research into some of these companies and trying to figure out some data all before we kind of go live and shoot it but for this experience, I haven't seen a lot of these before, and so we're kind of going in blind. So I have a little bit less, but I was able to find some information of this. And <clears throat> so it looks like our first whiskey is actually a rye, and it is the Sagamore Rye, which is actually by the MGP Distillery. And the MGP distillery is like, oh, we talked a little bit about it last time, but it's like the big distilled spirits company. Um, and they run out of Indiana. And they're like the huge uh, distillery. Funnily enough, the uh, Joseph Magnus that we tried last week actually blends and has some MGP uh, whiskey in it as well. And this is a, uh, a rye whiskey. It has at least 51% rye. And then it's got some corn and malted barley. It does have a blend with the MGP's high rye, apparently, of 95% uh, rye. Mm. And that's kind of blend in. They use new charred oak. Um, and it is, there is no age statement. Uh, but because it's a straight rye whiskey, we know there's at least a few years on it. Um, and I believe that for a straight rye whiskey, that it only needs to be aged for two years, but it might be four years still, just like bourbons. But I'm not 100% on whether the laws and taxation there is exactly the same. But I know if you have a Kentucky straight bourbon, then you have a, a minimum of a four-year bourbon. But, um, and that might be the same for the rise, in which case it would be a minimum of four years in it. And we got, it looks like 41.5% alcohol by volume. So not terribly hot. This is actually one of the lowest proof whiskeys we've had on the show so far. She's interesting on the nose. She's interesting on the nose, you say. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Let's see. Okay. Are these bottles bigger than what we get on the monthly? No, I think they're the same. I, I think they're the same. I would, I would say that they're the same. Yeah. Let's see. 50 milliliter bottles. So we're looking at almost a two ounce pour. Which, yeah, that looks about right. That's about right. 
So we got, you know, you can actually see it on the camera. It, there's quite a bit of red in this one. Yeah. Comparatively yeah. to a lot of the other whiskeys that we've had. This is the first one that really brings out a little bit more of those red, that red character or color. You know, I think it might be a tawny orange. A tawny orange. A tawny oh, yeah. Orange. So <laughs> Flaviar gives you a little booklet wow, with some information. Whatever. And it tells you, like, <laughs> make some notes Matt, on you're it. you're thinking that I, that I said that on my own. Oh, I knew you pulled that from some bullshit. Don't, <laughs> don't, don't, don't belittle my intelligence. <laughs> but yeah, and then it tells you to give your rating. It actually has a little QR code you can scan uh, for some more info. And I mean, Flavy Art does a really good job with the presentation here. And by all means, if, if they want... To us to say more nice things about them uh, a little <laughs> advertisement goes a long way D it's just say true. true we're gonna be with you for a while flaviar and we're either just going to rag on your whiskeys or say good things about them and you get to decide a little bit on it now <laughs> you but, get to choose uh but yeah on the nose this smells like floral it, it, kind of floral. I I mm. almost get dried fruits with rye a little bit. Yeah. But I definitely smell the rye, and I definitely smell uh, some floral notes. Okay, so I mean, right off the bat, the nose on this is better than most, but that's also probably because it's so low alcohol. Yeah, you're not. Like, it, it, there's it, not yeah. a lot of acetone here. Uh, yeah. It makes it easy to smell it. Like, definitely get the orange zest. And Even the peach and apricot, that's, it's actually like really easy to smell it. Yeah, definitely easy to smell some of those fruity notes on top. And Where's this from? So Sagamore Spirits um, is, I believe, in Indiana. Let me, let me check. That smells um, delightful. That smells really nice. Oh, they're in Maryland. They're in Baltimore, Maryland. Mmm. Mm. It's a distillery in Baltimore, Maryland. All right, here goes, boys. Yeah, so that's something mm. that we got to get get good at. You know, not all tasting at the same time, having all that down that that down time on the mic because you know podcasts. Uh, what are those? Yeah, what you're. Those about clock? <laughs> what is it? You're not supposed to have over two seconds of radio silence or whatever it is. Um, well, the first, the, the first touch is an interesting one. Surprisingly, mm. I get a lot of the fruit notes kind of die off. I definitely get rye and funnily mm. enough, I get a little bit of that tobacco and they, they have that in their tasting notes too, but I do get a little bit of that tobacco flavor right at the three quarter mark, right mm. before it goes into the. The tail, all rye. Like once mm -hmm. it's kind of done and it's settled in your mouth, I pretty much only taste rye. Um, yeah, but during the chew, like as long as I'm chewing it, all I taste is all of the fruit notes. Like mm -hmm. the fruit that you get on the nose, just maybe maybe more apricotty than the other noses. Nosies, nose eye, nozu. No zoo. Um, but yeah, now, I also get the tobacco. <laughs> you skipped a step. Rye. I skipped a step? Because yes. you're supposed to do the straight down first. Mm -hmm. And no, then you do to, the chew. No, you always chew because it has to hit every single uh, thing. No, no, no. Remember, there are, there are three. No. The first one, you let it go straight down. Quick sip, you let it go straight through. You coat the palate. The second, the second That's one not true. is the Eric, Kentucky all three Chew. Of us were there. All Eric, three of us were there. I was there. That's not right. We were at your, we were at your bachelor party. We I, were look, there. I am Eric, telling you. Were you were infatuated with the fact that we were having such a great time. You were drunk. You were <laughs> you were high <laughs> on life at the time. You didn't there know what you were thinking. There is the which has to touch everything in order to prime every single taste bud in the mouth. And and then you always chew. You always chew. There's never just a go straight down the gullet. Look, you it, it even uh, look at this. He's he's pulled up a diagram. I did. First, <laughs> you take a sip. You aim for the middle of your palate, and you put you just let it go straight down. 
Well, Eric, then, Eric, uh, Eric, then, Eric, I'm going to stop you there. You do the Eric, Kentucky Eric, chew. Look, get, I, I understand what you're saying. And from what you are reading, you take a straight shot and then you chew. Totally get that that's what you're reading. There are two people in this call who, on their initial education of what to do when drinking whiskey and or bourbon, both of us synonymously have been washing our mouths with this Kentucky Jew Alan. every time. Yes, sir. So don't tell me that the real, like the official way is to now shoot first and Look, then chew. As tell us before the call. Valid. Valid. Look, that's reasonable. This is what we were taught at the museum. Okay. If we all just listen to the internet, y'all might recall that video I sent you. First pour, you throw it out over your shoulder entirely. Disgusting. And then you pour it again. And then we would never get through any Flaviar because we would have no alcohol. Now, I have to say, <laughs> the deeper this gets embedded into my palate, the more one note it becomes for me. I think it's two. Two notes? I think it's two notes. What do yeah, you get? You get, you get the initial mouth uh like whenever it's still in your mouth and you're circulating it you have that floral fruit fruitiness and like a little bit of spice kind of like on the, the fringes of where you're holding the the alcohol and then as soon as you down it it's rye i think it's two notes see i'm and, getting yeah when i'm chewing it now a mm -hmm. lot of those floral and fruity notes have kind of gone out the window for me after settling with it and I really just get the tobacco mm -hmm. and the tobacco kind of lingers past the rye does past the rye flavor. So, so it kind of just turns into like a light tobacco all the way through for me. I want you to slow down, Eric, because that's happening to me, too. And I think we need to just stop drinking it until your taste buds have completely chilled out past yep. the rye and past the tobacco. And maybe once they've resettled. You can come back to it and get to that fruity flavors again, because that's the best part of this so far. Yeah, I think we're too excited yeah. and we're drinking it so fast, thinking that, oh, my gosh, is this the first time that yeah. we like a Flaviar? I... No, I don't know about you guys. Oh, yeah, that's a good point. <laughs> <laughs> I was about to recommend, though, I, I always have an old Forester rye with me now after the Bachelor weekend. I just like can't get away from this. Mm -hmm. So my wife just brought me this so I can compare Rise side by side. Oh, nice. Mm -hmm. so nice. If, I, I don't know if you all have any Rise in your, in your home. Uh, if you do, I recommend it. And I'll have to pick one up. But I definitely enjoy this already. Like, I mean... Oh, this is not a bad Rye, actually. This is actually a... Um, this is... <sighs> I'll go into my rating of it when we get to the ratings. But before we do that, I haven't done this in 10 episodes. And mm -hmm. I, I just wanted to let the, let the people know if you're liking what we're doing here. Uh -huh. Be sure to like and subscribe and tell us what whiskeys we should try next down in the comments. Because oh, that would be sick. Right. Yes. We, we don't get enough feedback. We want to get more mm -hmm. whiskeys to try. And I think crowdsourcing that out to the audience will help us kind of guide us through this journey that we're taking, you know? Mm -hmm, so please, mm -hmm, please, mm -hmm. like and subscribe and shoot a comment down there and tell us what we should try next. Say it with your fucking chest. Or, right. or drop a follow if you're on Spotify. <laughs> yeah, or drop a follow if you're, if you're listening on Spotify. Do we, the thing. For people Julie. who don't know, we are on Spotify. Please follow us and listen to our episodes on there if you're out doing a... A, a, a drive or just hanging out at the gym or something put us in the ear listen to our uh sexy vocal choir that mm -mm. we have going on mm -mm. Mm -mm. <laughs> <laughs> and uh and while we're, <laughs> while we're at it uh we'll probably talk more about this at the end but we do also have some gaming channels and other stuff that we can link or talk about at the end of the episode. yeah we'll, we'll do all that on the end so <clears throat> yeah. Anthony. Wow, I think Anthony, our host what? forgot how to drink. <laughs> I did. I, 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 I drowned a little bit there. 
So Anthony, what would you, you go into a store? And it's a it's a fairly nice establishment. It's got the wooden paneling and like uh, some people come up to help you and they they show you this bottle. What price tag does it have to have where you're walking out with that bottle? Well, this is a hard one because I'm sitting here comparing it to the Old Forester rye, which I enjoy as a rye. But, you know, there's no special nose off of that. Well, this one has an amazing nose. Mm -hmm. And then, but the Old Forester is uh, 100 proof, so 50% ABV, right? Or is that APV? I can never remember. ABV. So, ABV. So, I really enjoy it. I really enjoy the smell, the taste, all the flavors and everything. But I don't have a good gauge on whether or not I've had similar experiences with higher proofs. Uh, I typically like a higher proof. Um, As a crazy person, I I see higher proof equals bigger bang for your buck in terms of like getting that buzz you know what i'm saying he, and so Eric, anthony just wants to get fucked up some people look on, at it that way you booze hound you no no on the i, I do but i don't <laughs> on the i don't know what i was about to say is i think it's more challenging to give these experiences at like a baseline 100 proof you know what I'm saying? Like, it's kind of, what am I trying to say? So, a cognac, what is a cognac? Does anybody know off the top of their head how to describe a cognac? Kid America. <laughs> yes. So, a, a, a cognac is a brandy. It's a, it's a style of brandy made with cognac uh, grapes, if I remember correctly. I think they're, the grapes are actually called uh named after cognac grapes but essentially it's a distilled uh grape brandy so instead of right. wine where you you go in you mash up the grapes and you let it age in a barrel and it ferments naturally a cognac is distilled and that's that's how most brandies are done they're they're similar mash bill to wines but instead of just letting it ferment naturally, they distill it. Hmm. Yeah, and so according to the Googles, a cognac has alcohol content of 40%. This here whiskey is at 41.5. And when I'm drinking it, I feel like I'm drinking a cognac. I don't feel like I'm drinking a whiskey or nowhere near a bourbon, right? For some reason, I associate whiskey with basically at least 100 proof. And hmm. and so it's just I like it, but I don't think I would I would pay as much as I would pay for a cognac and and you pay less for wine than you pay for spirits. Well, so, it, it's funny how you say that, considering the most expensive spirits like in the world are cognacs. Um, <laughs> interesting. Uh, I've got a good cognac for only like 40 bucks, I swear. That's true, too, um, but cognacs get really, really expensive because really the fast. the grapes that cognacs usually were made with uh, got wiped out by oh. a, a um, an infestation. And so if you have cognacs from those types of grapes, like before that infestation, those cognacs are worth tens or hundreds of thousands of dollars like easy um and so cognacs can get very expensive very fast you have you know the hennessy's the Remy martins the they get crazy much quicker than say a bourbon or a whiskey does where 99 percent of your bourbons are falling below 500 bucks 95 percent are and then you have a few rare exceptions that jump up into the thousands tens of thousands and all the way up to what was the record made i think this year was like millions like 1.8 million or something um i and that actually just happened not too long ago uh i think a few weeks ago it was an insane amount. Some guy bought it at 
auction. It was like 6.2 million or something like that. It's crazy. So, so remind me what was the question before I get ahead of myself, because I'm ready to fire on all cylinders okay. here. Okay. <clears throat> you walk in to your liquor <laughs> store. Yeah. Nice establishment. And they say, hey, look at this. And they show you the Sagamore Rye, and it has a price tag. What does that price tag have to say so that you're picking yeah. up that bottle no matter what? Yeah, so despite everything I said, uh, my initial inclination was 40 bucks. And when I go online and I double check, my old Forester here goes for $28, okay? And so the old Forester is good. It's got a great experience. It's smooth, and I can't believe how cheap it is. Um, but this, you know, it might be less ABV, but it, it smells amazing. There's that amazing taste. Um, and then it has a nice rye finish. Like, it's, yeah. it's pretty dang good. So I could easily spend 40 bucks on this. Um, maybe a little bit more, but mm -hmm. it's not like... life changing. It's not life changing, so I'm not gonna go crazy for it. It's just it's something I wouldn't mind having around. And oh. the coolest part of it would be introducing like a friend to the fact that a whiskey can have such interesting features. Yeah, I I agree. There's a lot of interesting features here sure. um, at a pretty approachable ABV. Yeah. Absolutely. So what are you what are you rating it? What's your what's your rating? My rating is a difficult one. Mm. Um, mm. Ooh, I'm going to have to say I'm going to have to give it a solid 4.5. Wow. Weak. Uh, weak? <laughs> now, what does that mean? <laughs> you're in Texas. Okay. You go into the Googles. Yeah. And you find your local alcohol distributor. <laughs> <laughs> yeah you walk into the place they go hey i got the thing just for you and they pull out the sagamore rye what price tag does it have to have where you're walking out with that bottle 50 bucks 50 bucks okay yeah 50 bucks and i'll pick it up 50 bucks and you're picking up now what now what would you rate it my rate my rating would probably be Oh God! I did just like flame him for being four point seven five, didn't I? Four point five. Four point five. I would say it's a four. I'd say it's okay. a four. Yeah, yeah. Um, it is. It is. It is enough flavor for me to feel as if I'm getting a whiskey experience. I like it a lot. Yeah. That being said. I would want a like just it is so close to being like daily driver le level. I just need like a little bit more depth to either the the rye end of that burn or the uh, floral end of the of the mouth taste experience before you even before you even swallow it. I feel like you're wanting it to be more than it is, and then by the time you swallow it, you're like, oh. It's the, the ride's over. That that was it. The, that was all the ups and downs and the loop de loops that it's going to give me. And I would want one more like pitfall before the end of that ride. And yeah. now I have realized that it'd be pretty great in future episodes if we like write down our scores before we pr before we say them. Because I know I've been influenced many a time by not going first. And I think that just happened in that too. <laughs> <laughs> well, okay. So originally, let me be honest. Originally, I was like, "Oh, this is like a five. And then, like, the more, me too. Like, yeah, yeah. And then, like, I had, I don't know. I had a, I had a come to whiskey bourbon Jesus moment, <laughs> and uh, I realized that I'm, be I, you know, this is tasty, and I would suggest this to other people who are getting into whiskey and bourbon but this is still a very beginner level bourbon or and or sorry this is a very beginning le beginner level whiskey the abv is relatively low in comparison to the spirits that you can get and 
I think there is the, there is merit to the statement that the amount of al- alcoholic burn or spirit levity to a whiskey d- defining the experience itself. I feel like this, could, like if you upped the ABV, I think with the increased amount of alcoholic alcohol in the spirit, you also are increasing the amount of depth that you have in either um, avenue of flavor, whether it be the floral fruity bits or the tobacco and rye bit. Oh, mm-hmm. no, that that makes a lot of sense. This and meanwhile, go ahead. Oh, I was I was going to give it away. You go first. I was just going to mention, meanwhile, uh, I, I over-prepared for this episode because I didn't know what we were drinking. Oh, so wow. my wife was kind enough to bring me the rye fo- old forester to compare it to. But then I had actually went ahead and brought down something a little more special than my Woodford's Reserve. The, double, the Woodford Reserve double oaked, right? And this is 45.2% ABV. So right between what we're drinking right now and the old forester but so a little stronger but at the same time on the nose it's still got something going for it. it's still, it's still good and and on the t- on the on the mouth it's good too and so like definitely i can quickly see the wood for double oaked is is much better than what i'm what we're drinking today and it also costs a decent amount more. I was gonna say, right, totally. like, <laughs> what's the price point on that Woodford's Reserve? Yeah, it's somewhere around like seventy to eighty, I think, if I remember okay. right. Depends okay. on where you get it. Uh, I've I've seen it lower. Sometimes you can get it oh, in okay. the 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 around the thirty five forty dollar range. No. Um, some places Wait. have it at around fifty. No, I'm completely wrong. Yeah, it's fifty bucks, maybe fifty five. Yeah, you've been slipping, boy. Yeah, it depends well, on I where mean, you get it. Uh, some, this just tells you how good it is because I'm sitting here thinking it's worth way more than it costs. So, oh man, I will okay. say, the Sagamore Rye sits at a healthy thirty five dollars for MSRP. No way. I would huh. told. I'm buying this tomorrow. Okay. Yeah. I'm totally yeah. down with that. That is so for, good. For for thirty five dollars, this is a this is a totally great rye. Some places have it for one place near me has it at thirty two. It looks like, and uh, it looks like I can order it off Drizzly for thirty one dollars. That is insane. Wow. So that yeah, is crazy value. Yeah. So for I mean, considering that this is mm-hmm. a great rye. Uh, Mm -hmm. it is an easy drinker. I would say if you're mixing for cocktails and things like that, this probably isn't the way to go. Well, I would say it's not the way to go because it doesn't have the proof. It's not going to cut through as much. Oh, that's fair. You know what? I've never mixed. I'm I'm not the mixologist of this show. Let me reserve my tongue Uh, before I I split it. So I would say (laughs) this is definitely one of those. Get it as a sipping rye that's fairly affordable. I think this falls into the same categories like the old forester rye for me where it's just a nice affordable approachable rye to get at those lower price points as like Mm -hmm. a daily drinker if you like rye i think for somebody who's newer to whiskey loves rye doesn't Mm -hmm. really have or like the higher proof rise and wants just a little bit of that burn this is probably going to be their five daily drinkers Absolutely. like Absolutely. this has a lot of potential for that and because of all those things i i don't know if it's the rye for me for a daily drinker i want just a little more oomph to it a little bit more heat a little bit more mm-hmm. warmth yeah um but i do think this pushes like a four pretty easy for me absolutely and i i think nice. it's 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 just a little bit of abv away from and not even abv just a little bit more heat and Mm. this would definitely be like a daily rye drinker absolutely i could see so like it's really it's really good this has definitely earned a spot in my bar though like it's just absolutely i i i will try to have this at home at all times yeah it runs out 
go get a replacement just because yeah, it's, it's super affordable a, yeah it's close enough to a daily driver uh rating in terms yeah. of flavor to be an easy cop yeah. easy uh, the- my dad has this box by the way dad if you're listening and or watching the one's gonna be really good my guy we'll yeah. talk about it later yeah but, so yeah. flavia are starting pretty strong here like this yeah. is this is actually uh so this is the second highest rated thing we've had from Flaviar, according mm-hmm. to our ratings. The Ooh. only thing beating it so far being the Breckenridge Bourbon, which was okay. really good. Uh, and the Breckenridge Bourbon is actually the closest to our five for all of us, <laughs> which probably puts it at our daily driver of the show. Because I think Ooh, yeah. our, our kind of idea for our ratings is that our fives should be like daily drivers. They should be affordable, approachable, and things that you can have on a daily basis that are kind of fun to have. They're not earth shattering and they're not going to change your life. But at the same time, there's something that you can consistently go out and have fun with. Um, I think this almost falls into that category. And I think for some people, this is might be that, that five for them. So I, I definitely recommend trying the Sagamore Rye out. And I think for $35, it's a, it's a steal in a lot of ways for how diverse the flavor profile is. Hurts a steal there, bud. Hurts a steal. <laughs> so, uh, but for those of you out there that are uh, cheap like me, uh, uh, three is my daily drinker, okay? So this is a... Uh, 4.5 is a nice little treat. A five is a, is a, is a treat. And uh, anything above that... I'm barely touching it. It's cheaper than your Woodford's Reserve, right? No, okay. no. My Woodford's Reserve is my three, and that is... Uh, well, I God, I hope it's not cheaper. I mean, I it's a so. higher rating, and it's also, I'm going to guess, cheaper than your Woodford's, right? Uh, Woodford's is 34 bucks. Yeah, they're, oh, they're pretty similar. Oh, they're, they're pretty similar. Okay, tied. Okay, cool. That's actually surprising, yeah. Huh. Well, look at that. Okay, Flavia. Yeah, this, this, this was a good percent. start. I, I'm, I am optimistic so I'm far. I'm very optimistic. This now, was... this, it, you know what? Uh, hopefully, uh, it isn't one of those cases where they were like, ah, start with the best one. <laughs> oh, God. But we don't know yet. Uh, and, of course, uh, Flaviar, feel feel free to uh, uh, sponsor us on this journey. I think at the very least, this will be a fun experience. And I think the quality of the product is definitely high enough to warrant some support there. And so I like the idea of this product. I like the little booklet. Um, And we're going to we're you're going to see us kind of visit a, a bunch of these whiskeys over the course of this year. It might not be every episode, but we'll kind of go back and forth and let you know when we're trying something from the golden box. Uh, yeah, the lost <laughs> art of distillation. How many? So like, it's 24 glass uh, vials, right? I believe so. Yeah. Okay. So 24 vials. Uh, yeah. We got a healthy amount to go yeah, ahead and get us through the year. It's going to so be half of, half of our episodes this year, maybe. There, Maybe, there. Of course, yeah. if we get some special releases and we get some special stuff, there are a bunch of other things we want to try. And if we can get our hands on anything that comes out and releases this year, of course, we want to try to get some of the new 2024 things. But definitely, we're we're going to be visiting this a good bit this year to kind of talk about the different whiskeys that are in here. Yeah, and then we also have the comment uh, section requ- uh, requests and suggestions as yes. well. So we have a lot of things that we could possibly be bringing to the show in terms of uh, libations mm-hmm. if we want to drink. A hundred percent. Things. It's quite and uh, and uh, I've changed my mind. I, I sort of take back what I said a moment ago. I well, think uh, I've just not been exposed to things that are better than Woodford Reserve. <laughs> Oh, <laughs> well, no, I just I'm saying like I didn't know that you could get a pretty good experience at basically sub forty dollars. Ooh, you know, is that personal growth. <laughs> is, it might be. 
<laughs> he is learning. He can be taught. Oh my gosh. Oh my god. Excellent. All right. Well, then, since you've learned so much, you can kick off our next segment, I guess. I, unless we have any other tasting notes left to go ahead and give the Breckenridge. Uh, uh, the oh, Sagamore. Sorry, the Sagamore. The Sagamore. Oh my god. Yep. Breckenridge on your mind. Absolutely. But. Yeah, so uh, are we going into games Games we've played? Is that what's next? Yeah. I believe so. Anthony, what have All you right. been playing this week? So, um, for those of you in the know, I've been creating quite a lot of content since this podcast finally, not finally, but made its debut. Wow. Yeah. yeah. We are, we are in, officially debuting. The, the, the people <laughs> are a few episodes behind us on the YouTubes, of course, but... At some point, I'm sure that will kind of catch up as life inevitably will have us miss Happen. a few weeks. But absolutely, the it is up. We are getting subscribers and views, and we th- thank you so much for tuning in. Those who are tuning in, and uh, we're just gonna keep you know chugging along and trying to create cool reviews and uh, gaming interesting topics and all that kind of stuff for you. So. Speaking of gaming topic, my guy, what have you been? Playing? Yeah, thanks, thanks to uh, thanks to Eric's inspiration, I have been editing more than I've been gaming. But <laughs> when I'm gaming, I am often memeing. Oh no! <laughs> so uh, yesterday, yesterday, no, two days ago on Valentine's Day, my wife and I decided to become the arbiters of love on the sea of thieves oh no <laughs> so we got back out and we were pink and and everything looked like love and we were just trying to you know bring love to everybody they all wanted to kill us except some of them didn't want to kill us and and long story short i forgot to not forgot to actually the record button didn't uh work i pushed it many times and nothing uh Saved. I think you're only oh. supposed to press it one time, Anthony. I have a uh, instant replay. I have an instant replay feature that will uh-huh. save the last uh, three minutes, five minutes, whatever I set it to. So I was using that just to cut down on my, you know, how long it would take me to edit things. It wasn't working. So from now on, I think I'm probably just gonna go the long route and mm-hmm. do the one guaranteed record button like we have going on right now for the podcast. Because that doesn't make any sense, Anthony. <laughs> well, when, when at one point in time I was using up too much data, I think, for my recordings. I think I've since dialed that back. So, like, right now I could record this podcast for another 30 hours, right? So, in the past I could only go, like, two hours of oh recording because the data was just, like, uh, too big. Um, Were you recording yeah, in, like, 4, 8K? Like... It's not about the resolution so much as it's about the CQP continuous oh, yeah. quality something. Uh, I was running at like an 18 at one point. I've cut it all Jeez. the way back down to 24. Yeah. Uh, so it's much less high quality. Uh, but yeah, so another, well, I have played some other games. So oh. recently, uh, Bonvi and Eric. Uh, and Ash, my wife, played Lethal Company with us, with me, for the first time. Wow. And that game is wow. hilarious. It's, it's fun. It's it. fun. Wow. And, and we need, we need, we need to, to do the Tap Haven <laughs> plays. Uh, mm-hmm. which... Have you played? I have not. I have never Dude. played Dude, it. Dude, let's play it. Let's go. Let's do it. I've never played it. Let's do it. Man. Let's do a recording of it. And so everybody can experience a great game. And me screaming oh, yeah. at the screen. Yes. <laughs> it's so good. We, we got we to gotta get your recording on that. Yep. Oh, man. And then um, I think the last game I really played was today, actually. Uh, before the podcast, Eric and I hopped into Helldivers for the first time. You son of a... <laughs> and <laughs> I, I had <laughs> no idea that uh, I am legitimately the target audience for Helldivers because I queue up this game and the cin- intro cinematic goes on and I'm like, this is Starship Troopers! Yes, yeah. it, is. it is Starship oh Troopers. God. It's, it's amazing. Starship but I will say, 
two things. One, best tutorial ever. Definitely play through the tutorial. And two, I haven't gotten to shoot bugs yet. So Nat, if you're available tomorrow, let's go shoot some fucking, let's go shoot some <laughs> bugs, man. Sorry, I'm an editor now and cussing sucks for editing. <laughs> it does, <laughs> it does. I, it a lot. I know. I a lot of this stream. I don't care. How many times <laughs> I have to put a duck sound for Nat's F words. <laughs> <laughs> Dude. yeah eric and i were playing we only got to fight robots and i really want to fight some bugs so if you got time tomorrow um, i'm waiting for you like we got all right, gotta, all right. We gotta hit up. Also, we might have a fourth because if she doesn't fall asleep before this podcast is over, I'm getting my wife to watch Starship Troopers with me for the first time tonight. Oh, but nice! I want, I want her to see that movie before she plays it because it's a good, she's, good you know, mood. The game exists. What was that? It puts her in the mood. Yeah, it'll, it'll put you in the mood. It's, yeah, it, it'll. Yeah, for sure. Especially. Uh, yeah, I just want to go a little crazy with this game. Like it's it's got that right vibe, you know. Yeah. Oh, but, man. It's good. Oh, man. Well done so far. I like it. I like it. What what have you been playing, Nat? Do we need to wait a couple of days <laughs> to get the answer? Huh? <laughs> you <have> the same <laughs> answer? <laughs> no. So I haven't been able to play anything because I've been playing Cult of the Lamb. Uh, and then in between Cult of the Lamb, I've been uh, spending time with with the lady and uh, studying pretty much. Mm -hmm. Cult of the Lamb addict. Yeah, uh, I, I hit the point in the game where and spoiler alert, like you have five seconds for three, two, one, zero. Um, I hit the point where you kill your god. And you basically start becoming your own god yeah. oh cool so it is it cool. is what it is pretty rad and they, they give you these stones that uh throughout the entire game you've been choosing like how you want to rule your people and they give you these stones that allows you to choose the things that you didn't pick up as you went through it so it's just like it's min maxing on a completely different level and i spend more time in the village now than i do in the actual levels and they yep. closed all the all the doors so your res like a lot of the things that you were relying on for resources through the game are now sealed again you have to unlock them again yep. so wow. there's this, like constant resource race to kind of like get back to where you were and then there's another uh, there's like a being that you name in game um it's just like a godlike arbiter of some kind yep. that's like giving out these rewards and basically telling you hey you need to go out and do these stuff so i don't know but we'll see i don't know no nope. Uh, I've been playing that, and That's then really cool. I just pulled cool. up Hell Hell Divers Two on PS Five. Nice. Um, I've been seeing memes about it all week, and I'll have you know, I played the first one. Yep. Oh man, I did too. And I'm pretty sure I played it with like three other people. So I played it in the four man squad, Ooh. and I will tell you the amount of. It it just gets so absurd. It's it so good. It's 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 not like that. It like gets extremely good. It just gets so immersive that there's a point in time where you're like, I don't know why I'm so fast on my D pad now, but I can type in codes in my sleep. Like yeah. I was like, da -da 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 -da. like if I need ammo, I like I already know down down left left blah, 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 blah. like it's stupid. So really I don't cool. know if Helldivers Two kept that. It did. It did. Oh my god, yes. And that's back, one of my babe. favorite. We're so that's bad. One of my favorite <laughs> features because uh Eric and I like to talk about theoretically making video games all the time. And one of the things we've been chatting about is having things like spells and whatnot have like kind of a rhythm game aspect to it where it's yep. I don't just cast the spell, I like I gotta do this little like mm -hmm. A B X Y at the right time and stuff like that. And seeing Helldivers do this, it's like, oh, okay, yeah, like, basic spells, or basic whatever, could be... Basic drops. Just those things in order. Mm -hmm. But then, like, oh, I'm a more advanced wizard now, doing more advanced spells. Well, now you got to do the timing, too. And it's like a little beat rhythm game in the middle of your combat and stuff like that, and it just seems really neat. Yeah. Well, I want to see more of that. As somebody who has imbibed the uh, Helldiver juice from the first game and had to bear through that uh, that UI um, for the upgrading and everything, 
I, I God, I'm just really hoping that when I open this game up, it's not going to be just a fresh level of hell again. Uh, I do want some. You, you have to remember, <laughs> it's third person now, not I, top down oh, ARPG. Ter- terrifying. It, it really terrifying. the difference is similar to like Risk of Rain one. To risk of to rain risk too. Of rain too, absolutely. Yeah. So, so it has I'm the terrified. same ideas, but like it feels so much more hectic than the original. I'm terrified. Right? I've I've seen some of the videos of the people like uh, diving in slow motion, <laughs> like oh my gosh, it's so funny. They get closer and they're getting like the war, uh, the war themes theme music in the background. Yeah. It's so good. So I'm very excited to like pick this up. I'm wondering if the four the four man squad that I played it with originally is gonna try and play it. But regardless, I know some people who are into this, so I'll be, definitely be picking it up. If nice. any of the if any of the viewers want to play Hell Divers too, and like I don't know, drop a fucking ammo uh, resupply on my head, then by all means, let me know. Let's go. Um, but uh, I I have a very active day tomorrow. I have a uh, workout, and uh, I, my wife has a surprise for me, so I'm setting oh, aside, aside some time. But um, Valentine's surprise? Yeah, Valentine's. Well, nice. like, it's Valentine's Day slash birthday stuff. Nice. Yeah, nice. just birthday. Yeah. yeah, yeah. But I'm stoked. And then uh, I don't think I'll be on until later. But yeah, I'm so down for playing Hell Divers whenever I get a chance. It looks fun. I also have to get finished with my preparation for my exam because I will probably take my exam next weekend. So, <laughs> woo! Nice. That'll be so dope. Yeah. Oh, be so but yeah, dope. that's what I've been doing this week. Uh, Eric, what have you been doing? <laughs> So, uh, it has been, let's see, this, this week, what, what have I been playing? It's, it's mainly, so, oh, that's right, everybody who's watching the YouTube shorts kind of already knows, but I was able to finally try out Dredge. Oh! So, we, we talked nice. about it in one of the previous episodes, and I was like, okay, I love Craftian, uh, uh, Bush, you know, I'm like a Lovecraftian inside of a like yeah, an aquatic a little theme. aquatic yeah. fishing yeah. game. Ah, uh, and so far, super interesting. I mm-hmm. like where the story's going. I love the little tidbits in the distance. I just got to this area, and this isn't really a spoiler area because the whole game is like, here's monsters from the deep. Have fun. Um, yeah. Yeah. I got the little boat thing chasing me across the map. And then I got to this little area where they're like, oh yeah, you want, you want the fish? The fish are in that mountain range. And oh, you're like, ravine. what do you mean? And you're like, let me go explore the mountain. Oh, but they're only out at night. And then the ravine. There's, there's a giant <laughs> serpent swimming through the water constantly and he chases you everywhere yeah it's terrifying it's the worst so annoying and then you have little eyes popping up in the darkness every time uh but lo and behold i i got to play uh that a ton uh over the past week and so i've collected a few of the artifacts i'm hoping that i'll be able to collect all the artifacts there's a from the moment you enter the game you have access to a map and on that map is a giant question mark in the middle of nowhere. Obviously, that's going to be something. So I, I'm excited to see where that adventure takes me. I think a little bit of that is going to be on my personal channel once I have that up and running. And so you can see that whole adventure there of me uh, being like, WTF is this fish doing before it attacks me? <laughs> yeah. Uh, oh man no. but it's then, gonna be a good time it's gonna yeah. be a good time so far so good i of course i love lovecraftian stuff i've read a bunch of the books and so lovecraftian horror is always existential horror is always really really fascinating to me and so this does a really good job of capturing that with this terror but the simplicity of the mechanics is kind of this contrast Mm -hmm. and it makes for a really cool experience in similar ways to like an amnesia game or 
a paranormal activity game. Typically, horror games offer very low interaction and they limit your capability to see things to create dread in otherwise very simplistic scenarios. And I feel like Dredge does a really good job of encapsulating that in a top-down fishing game that I haven't seen before. And it does a really good job at that. So I, I'm excited to play more of that. And on, yeah, on the same note, I was able to do a little bit of Lethal Company with Anthony over the weekend, and that was super fun. I think it is really the next progression of a game like Paranormal Activity that I feel has more engagement in a lot of ways. It Paranormal makes it interesting. Phasmophobia. 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 I didn't know they made a game out of it. No, 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 no. Phasmophobia, Phasmophobia. Met, uh, has met. Um, oh my God! What's that game called? Oh, oh, oh my God! Oh no! It's so much uh, more approachable than Phasmophobia, though. It is combined with that game that was huge during COVID. And it among, us? Little, among, among us, among us, among us, it's like Among Us and Phasmophobia, yeah. baby. And I am so yeah. excited because we need to play Lethal. First, we need to play Lethal Company, but then mm. we need to download <laughs> the mod for Lethal Company. And if you haven't heard about this, there is a mod that you can download where oh, it right. takes your audio that we're all talking through. And it will sometimes play it out to people. So whatever you say, regardless of whether you're near them or not, gets recorded in mm. this mod, sent to the other people, and there are mimic monsters no, in the game who will, who will put oh, out dear. the voice from the people that you're playing with. I'm no. excited. I cannot wait. We're playing no. that, Nat. <laughs> Welcome to the group. This is the Tap Haven podcast. This is what you no. signed up for. <laughs> This is why you get paid the big bucks. That's what we're doing. <laughs> I don't know. Dude, I, I can't that. wait. I can't wait. I know. It's going to be so I good. Despise, I despise so many like horror games. I'm not a fan of those games where you feel like you can't do anything, almost like you're in a dream where you just can't run fast enough. Yeah. I, I, I don't do those. But this game is great. It is. And it's, it's so much better than Phasmophobia in my mind because there's a lot of things about Phasmophobia that are just tedious and annoying and in this 100%. game it's like you either succeed or you fail yep. and if you're failing well half of your team is dancing having a dance party and it's yeah. their fault <laughs> so yeah. but if, if anybody wants to check out some of some of the highlights from these uh game sessions that we're having i've got a couple uh, that are featuring eric's wife because she's hilarious and i'm oh sure God. by the time you get here we'll have some featuring all of us and yep. maybe one or Two, well, I think it's only four player game. So maybe we'll get a wife four player of game. ours yeah, to, to join in. in <laughs> or, or maybe it'll just be the three of us. But yeah, I'm sure there'll be some some great highlights. Oh yeah, it'll be uh, it'll be a fun one. <laughs> right oh for you guys. God. So uh is there anything yeah. else that you uh played, Eric? Or I, th are we the, on I think the, the last thing was really Hell Divers. Uh Hell Divers was really the the big one outside of that that we played today. And Hell Divers won, I played a good bet i have like uh 10 or so hours or something into it i didn't play a huge amount but super fun hell divers 2 is just so this? fun uh right out the gate it gets you into the action super quick it's surprisingly difficult because of that second you know the Bruh. third person being able to look around and deal with three dimensions adds a whole new level to it um, I'm excited to play more. I, I think it'll be super fun. I, I think it'll be a fun Tap Haven plays as well for us. Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah. Let's see. I just, I just love the uh, how memesy the developers are. Like they, they bound some keys to some special buttons just, just because they knew you're gonna push that button and then you're gonna be like, whoa, what just happened? Why? That's why true. That they did why that. that here. Yeah. Now, oh, Nat, are you going to play it on purpose. the PS5? I'm going to definitely play it, play it on the PS5. You, you know, won't have so that experience. Do that. Yeah, you can spoil can... it for him because he's not going to get to experience it. <laughs> Nat, 
Yeah. Alt is dive. So you alt tab and boom, you're just diving away. Like I didn't even Yeah. I was like, why did that just happen? I didn't even learn how to dive yet. And my character's just oh on the floor. God. They a hundred percent did oh, that on purpose, where alt tabbing just throws you in the direction you're pointed. This is a great game, guys. I'm, so, I'm stoked. I'm stoked. Yeah. Um, yeah. So, so should we go to things we're looking forward to? Yeah. Yes. So, uh, I mean, I'm looking forward to more Hell Divers and and Asmophobia Light, i.e., Lethal Company. Uh, that's going to be great. I honestly am not too aware of any new games on the horizon, but dude, I'm gonna say it every week. There's so many updates that I see coming from the creators I follow for Star Citizen. I'm looking Bloody. forward to it finally being in a place where Eric's going to enjoy it. And maybe we can have a Tap Haven plays session because it's getting close. Like it getting is close? it is my all time favorite game. It's going to stay that way. Like it's not even out yet. And it is the best game I've ever played. It's incredible. Uh, the only reason I'm not playing it actively lately is just because not easy to make content for that game uh you kind of need a crew right now oh. and until you can hire ai crew or they improve <laughs> certain things it's that's not really an option but like one of the things that got me excited the other day is they're finally bringing in this um the new combat system so and it's for it's for flying combat okay so basically there's a problem where ships can fly too fast and it's too easy for them to get away from you. And that's not fun. They're going for a World War II flying combat style, right? And now they're rolling it out to where if you want to fly away from somebody, I'm sorry, you got to dedicate enough power that basically your shields go down. And so you better be able to survive that your exit strategy. You can't just leave. And one of the coolest things I heard was a content creator. Th there's this ship called the Hammerhead, and it looks like a hammerhead. And it's got at least four, maybe it's got so many turrets. It has, I think it has at least six turrets. You know, it's got top turret, bottom turret. It, it can cover so many things, right? Jeez. And this thing is supposed to be a f something that everyone's terrified of. And apparently it now is. You got a bunch of light fighters. They used to be able to just spin circles around it and and it wouldn't last too long um now you're taking out all those light fighters like you would expect a bunch of turrets to and that just sounds incredible like it, it's it's gonna be good i can't wait um and and that you're gonna love it okay space nerd you already i'm not actually okay i space Nerd. I only recently, like in the past year or two, ever watched like Star Trek, and I never got why people like Star Wars. You know, I was always into the you know, World of Warcraft fantasy Star Trek and stuff game, like right? that. You're literally well, playing actually, the idea. It, 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 no, it's no, modeled more no. after Star Wars than anything oh, else. It's it's modeled off off of both. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, no, I'm just saying. Second off, second off. The only thing missing from either of them is that there is not a uh, universal discovery area. Uh, sorry, pro, uh, program that runs the entire story of uh, of the of the game. Oh my gosh. The whiskey it has boiled away my brain this is terrifying oh no that, that was the goal <laughs> the lightweight. that was the plan i'm a lightweight holy crap and uh and there's no lightsabers yet god well there are there are uh -huh. daggers i can't remember their swords soon. but um soon you know one thing that they are coming out with soon is uh actual loot tiers you know legendary common etc and so it's getting closer and closer to being what I always wished that um, the game we used to play all the time, Destiny, Destiny oh, Two. God, don't say her name. And and it's gonna name. it's it gonna be it's fresh. What that game always made me want. It's not know? even fresh. It's just always there. Just always hurts. It's just the wound hurts. never heals. Destiny Two, <laughs> the video game Destiny Two, man. Yeah, jeez. My my wife was next to me. She's like, "Who the fuck is she?" And I'm like, "No, it's, don't worry about it." It's a game. <laughs> it's hopes and dreams shot it's over and over dreams. again. 
guys, there's so much time in that game from me, and it's let's just I'm just gonna that, move on. It just makes do you it have hurt anything, more. Do you have anything else that you're that you're excited about, uh, looking forward to, Anthony? Before I can you know wipe this memory from my brain, like I did the. 200 plus hours of time that i've put into destiny oh my goodness uh games wise no but if we uh loop back around uh you know we used to do a show segment i do have a few things for that okay cool um i'll go eric go for uh, it what are you I looking need, forward I to, to watch this yeah, yeah, this yeah, yeah. Out of my get the uh, uh so I'm obviously looking forward to Helldivers. Um, I'm looking forward to a game that I don't think I will be able to run on my computer because it is a, uh, I think it's PC only. I'm not sure. But it, uh, I saw a few advertisements for it and I was like, ooh, kind of a cool idea. Um, mm-hmm. It's called Banishers um, Ghost of Eden. Ghost like that. of New yeah, Ghost Eden. Of Eden. Ghost of New Eden, yeah, and uh, story based uh, gameplay where there's a little bit of the choice choices that you make causing uh, ratifying change throughout the entirety of your story. Hmm. Um, looked really interesting, but I was not sure if I was going to be able to play it. So I also have been looking into another game. I can't think of it off the top of my head. It was on my freaking to do list to like get more information on it i saw it in something on tiktok and i was like oh my god i want to play this you got the crap out of this game yeah yeah i don't even remember like what it looks like either (laughs) so like i'm just i'm literally just chatting out my out my my booty so that's what i'm looking forward to um ghost of new eden that's what i got nice the destiny 2 comment just rattled me it just got nothing. you off, off <laughs> oh. completely threw me off i'm now a actual baby version of nat who just booted up destiny thinking he's gonna make a change to the world and that's it that's a lie <laughs> oh man oh, oh man that's that's uh star citizen will take over your destiny to no, it won't. Like, no, it will. it will not. It nothing will. will take no. Matt, nothing will I fill have that hole. I, okay? I wait. Nothing I know you can't see me right now. I need that void. I know. Da- look how first. Look how disappointed Deku is that so he's not featured in this podcast. So oh my god, he just did the boy. lap thing. What oh, boy. he's so oh, no. He's so depressed. Oh, he really is. He wishes. He wishes he was with you guys. No. Okay, Matt. Yeah. I have physical record proof digitally uh-huh. Uh-huh. that you very much uh-huh. loved and will love star citizen <laughs> he does tell I me about this he has he has recordings of uh-huh. you enjoying playing that game now i can't speak to the truth of the matter Shut up, Shut but up, the Barry. proof Shut is up, in the pudding i don't want to hear your bullshit Barry. <laughs> how dare you betray me in this way but yeah <laughs> that's where i'm at in terms of um uh, excitement i know that there's probably another game up on coming up on the horizon that i haven't thought of i i had something in my head and then destiny 2 came up and then i just thought about all like all the exotics that just like had all this potential to be like really cool and then the game just like took a giant dump on its entire franchise for for seemingly no reason but yeah i mean it's a rough it is it's it a is. rough life. it is what it is yeah. it is what it is like i love that like this is no hate at the devs there's no hate at anybody who's making the game because i mean anybody who looks at the game can tell you that it is a beautiful game it's just that that story and that general management of that ip has just been Tough. absolutely trash it's changed i mean changing a main monetary backer multiple times throughout the development causes yeah. lots of hardships for the developers and everybody involved Mm -hmm. from direction to it's hard to make a cohesive put together game if that happens Mm -hmm. i was gonna say it's just it's a classic story that happens everywhere whether it's in the gaming industry or basically any industry you have really great success because you had a great idea and it's amazing and people love it and now that you have so much success who's in charge sales publishers the people that are in charge of the money not the people that are the artists not the creators not the ones that actually care about the 
quality and and the creative direction you know and so then it things fall apart when that happens it, it's so common everywhere see i would i would take that to heart and say that you know what you're probably right but for those of you who know about how destiny is now and have played destiny at the very beginning this game did not start great it was beautiful but it had some serious issues and oh man you know what I feel this, myself pulling out the soapbox. I'm going to put the soapbox back because I don't want to get into it with yeah. this Destiny game, oh. man. I love I it, mean, but at the same I, time, I, I've said my piece to uh, to you, y'all probably in some other call, but <laughs> it's a beautiful game, and for those of you guys who are willing to continue to play the game in its current model, by all means, continue to do so. It's oh, just, yeah. it's, aged, it's aged out for me, especially for somebody can, who's played it from like the heyday to now it's 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 a foregone conclusion for me it's not for me anymore uh, that's reasonable i i think the only I mean, the, uh, go ahead nathan say that oh, now. robot anthony, robot anthony, anthony is has returned ah! Ah! He's played too much hell diamonds. Oh. His doppelganger is here yeah the automate right. automaton has joined the call oh my god that mountain Wi-Fi has back. officially pooped on you. Nope, your face is still frozen. Yeah, we're yeah, just, yeah. Definitely not back. Definitely a robot. Definitely uh, not. While while we're waiting on uh, Anthony to become a real boy again, uh -huh. um, I'll say what I was going to say. the mm -hmm. The only thing I would say about Destiny Two that's very just an interesting thing, and this happens with games in particular, especially very successful ones. Once you get to a certain point of success and you need to have a way that makes money in a game and more time, thought, development from a UI, UX perspective to how it integrates with your character, when more time is put into the aspects of the game that make money mm -hmm. instead of the aspects of the game that are fun, it's going to gap between the players yeah. yeah it's going to be hard to make a the fun parts of the game as good as they could be even yeah. if you make a great game i would always argue that if you're putting a lot of development resources into the things that make the money for the game you're not putting those resources into things that make the game fun and that's that's that there's a balance there right there. at the same yeah. time you got to make money for the game to even be there. Yeah. So it's entirely reasonable for me, for, for a salesperson or a publisher to be like, we need to make money. It's just about finding. It's a balancing act and it's hard to do, especially yeah. when you consider things like Pirate uh, Software talked about this in a famous short that he had very recently. Where he was like, the first skin that they like ever did for world of warcraft or something like that made more money than all of the sales for diablo 3 like full stop and i uh, don't quote me on that yeah, makes sense. go watch his yeah. short for the actual yeah, yeah. numbers he knows them but like the comparison there is insane mm -hmm. and so you have to do things like that to make money but in destiny i think they missed the balance just a little bit and then they mm -hmm. were in a constant struggle for the rest of their development cycle to try and bridge that gap. Mm -hmm. And they had a bunch of things happen from a company perspective that added more and more hardships that they had to solve. Mm -hmm. It just made it really hard for them to make the fun parts of the game fun. Yeah. And have, have you read the Jason Stryer interviews about this? at all a little bit a little bit okay so like i think his the information that he got from a previous developer was kind of an eye-opener for me and it, it's become just like more and more weighty as i've uh continued to watch the progression of the game they did not build that engine with the with the benefit of being able to edit it very cleanly or or yeah. or to do anything that was not time intensive like it was a very heavy engine i would i'm gonna assume i'm yeah. not a developer so i don't know but from the interview it came it 
he basically describes that the engine was just so hard to deal with that with the changes that they were trying to make by the time they rolled out five or six thousand more other issues would be, pretty much be popping up at the same time oh. i'm exaggerating obviously but the idea that they couldn't make the changes that they needed to make to the system because of how heavy it was and so they just chose not to do it in some cases i, I understand because you you can only do oh. as much as you have your staff uh, as much as your staff is willing to be able to do even under crunch, but there's yeah. some, there's something about the early times of like seeing them pretty much make the game great, regardless of the fact of if it was bringing in money or not. Like, I don't think that there was, I, I qu don't quote me obviously, but uh, I'm pretty sure there was not a uh, season pass for the game within destiny the first game and i will say i will <laughs> i will put money down that de the first game destiny was not perfect but it was probably the peak of that game's like hype like when oh, things yeah. dropped in destiny you were like oh shit let's go um so yeah that's that's all i got to say about that that's all I got to say about oh. that. That's all I got I'm to back. Say I'm not a robot no more. There we go. He is. There he we is. Go. You've returned. He's back. He's back. But yeah, uh, those that's the, those are the games that I'm kind of excited for. Nice. Um, Eric, what do you got? What are you look? What are you looking forward to? Oh man, so I got a bunch of stuff I'm looking forward to this year. I'm not going to cover everything in the, the one of the first episodes of the year, but. The big things this month in particular are both coming at the very end of the month for me, and I'm so excited for them. One is possibly one of the most inspirational and interesting games uh, that I have ever played. They're doing a remake of it, and it is one of the few games that is a masterclass of interesting mechanics in a story driven game and that is brothers a tale of two sons oh they're doing a sequel no they're doing a remake with new graphics oh. better engine that game is heart-wrenching and has such a wonderful story and the way they do the storytelling in that game through the mechanics is unique interesting and just some of the best that has ever been done in that style it's very similar to something like Sanua's sacrifice which also has a second game coming out this year which i'm super excited for and I'm super excited Sanua's sacrifice uh, won game of the year when they did it and was it is probably one of the best takes on mental illness in a game that i've ever seen and if y'all haven't played that game, both Brothers, A Tale of Two Sons and Sinua's Sacrifice, I beg you, they are an experience that you can only get in gaming. Both of them do things that just can't be done in other mediums, and they highlight what is so wonderful about games. And both of them are heart-wrenching and have such amazing stories. Mm -hmm. And it would... It is... You're almost doing yourself harm by not going in and experiencing those those games. And I would argue that Sanua's Sacrifice is one of those experiences that changes how you think in your daily life after you've played it. And it is a rough playthrough, and it's not entirely it's not fun. Perfect. No. Well, not even that it's not yeah. uh, uh, like perfect from a game perspective. It's one of... It is so mentally changing and it, it almost feels bad to play at moments because of how much it imparts this idea of mental illness onto you as the mm. person playing the game. But it is such a real and gritty experience. Well mm. worth it. It's so amazing. Those two I am heavily looking forward to. And the other one 
is Final Fantasy VII Rebirth, February 29th. Disgusting. Disgusting. Oh, no. no. I'm joking. I'm joking. I'm joking. It's a great game. For anybody who knows, for the longest time, it was my favorite game of all time was, of course, Final Fantasy. I know. Uh, we cliche. Like, yeah. Yeah. Uh, you yep, can yep, yep. you can tag me with Spiky all the terms hair, like sword, all of it. Yep. yeah mm-hmm. like i'm i'm with you it, it's but the remake so far has been wonderful in my opinion and it's so awesome to see that story in all of the cinematic glory that we can do nowadays so then mm-hmm. remaking it a remaking one of my favorite games of all time has just been really cool to see so i'm excited to play those especially there are a bunch of other stuff that i'm excited for but those three especially this year are really cool experiences and senua sacrifice one is in like my top 15 games of all time final fantasy 7 coming out is gonna be huge exactly top game Brothers, a tale of two sons is like my fifth favorite game of all time. Like it's a, it's a, it's a banger of, a yeah, year these year. three are, I, I'm really looking forward to them and I heavily recommend them to anybody. Um, I have in the game was inside my library. I have not picked it up yet. I have a oh, VR man, you gotta, as well. So dude, you, you got to play it. I, I don't have a VR headset though. So I, I won't give anything away. Uh, story wise but the kind of synopsis is that you play a person with schizophrenia but you're in pre-medieval nomadic like tribe Mm -hmm. uh, time and so nobody knows what schizophrenia or any of these things are but you have them and so you get to experience them in all the gritty details of what society would have been like then. And the mechanics make you feel like you have schizophrenia. No joke. And it can be, I understand like for some people that could even be triggering. It is so visceral, Mm -hmm. but as somebody who doesn't have it, like the, the empathetic levels that you gain by playing through that game, that it feels like something that only gaming could do, where it mm-hmm. makes you second guess things that you're hearing, and that's it's such a cool interaction mechanic. with a game yeah, and yeah. cool mechanic. And I'm so happy that they won uh, game of the year for it when they did. So good. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I remembered my game, by the way. Okay, because I know we're about shoot. to jump into shows. Yeah, yeah, yeah um, shoot. It was Prince of Persia 2024, or I think it's 2024. Oh, yep. The newest one looks Dude, sick. It looks so amazing. It oh. looks sick. I don't I'm know if so- you, ha- bro, if I'm going to tell you right now, like those kinds of games, like where it's almost feels like it's a God of War, but it's a little bit more uh, techy Dude. in terms of skill. Like it looks they Gnarly. they just made Prince of Persia super fun in my yeah. opinion. Yeah, Anthony's like awesome. dying over there. Nah, you reminded me of a game I played and I forgot I played it, and I was glad I forgot. But you reminded me. What game did I you play? I played Skull and Bones. Oh, he did. Oh. And and Skull and Bones is terrible. Oh. Waifu, back off. <laughs> We're, we're, we're recording a podcast. Get out of Where's here. Waifu? No, that's not waifu. Waifu's not here. No, it's, Anyways. It's, it's just boots. <laughs> what do you mean it's just boots? It's just, it's, it's the lovely. Oh, no, waifu's coming. Oh, my God. <laughs> He's under attack. He's under attack. They're, they're watching a dog named oh, uh, Waifu. Oh, my God. The massive girl that is. That is Waifu. a big Hi. corgi, and she is beautiful. Oh, my gosh. Once again, for those listening, I'm sorry, but if you want to see some cute dogs, mine was on earlier, and now we got another one. Oh, we are officially a dog podcast now, I feel. We are. We are. <laughs> Adorable. Oh, she's. She's lashing out. Oh, now she's kissing. She tried to bite the wife. 
He kissed the husband. <laughs> She's a sweet. <laughs> we know where her priorities lie. <laughs> uh, that's funny. Kiko! Oh, Kiko! <laughs> Kiko! Yes. Kiko, the most adorable puppy ever that's not evil like Winston was. Uh, yeah, Winston, Winston was pretty evil. I do have to say that uh, I had to create a new boat in Sea of Thieves for the memes, and I named it Winston. Oh, <laughs> solid. Because what is a good name? Because if if your it boat, is. you got to treat your boat like it's a person. And you're like Winston. Winston, what are you doing? Come back here! Winston! That's no! funny. <laughs> no, Winston. Uh, oh, and back so, to sadness. So the game that you got really Skull sad. And bones. Skull okay. and bones. Okay, I came oh, to some no. conclusions, some realizations. I shared these a little bit with Eric on a long drive yeah. recently, I think. Yeah. And I'm going to share them again. Oh. Skull and bones. I uh, I agree with a, another content creator. It's like it's like a piece of poop wrapped in gold. Uh, it looks oh. good, but it's 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 not doing well okay so it's not god of war one and god of war two very linear very mm -hmm. on rails experience and the story because of that is is awesome mm -hmm. you're like I'm, I'm gonna kill you god like screw you aries or whatever like i'm the i'm gonna destroy you, you right yes and then the second one is screw and you i love because, that yeah. and and those Eric and Nat are very uh, uh, familiar with this, but for the viewers, Eric and Nat have been convinced for a while that I just don't like stories and games. And I've also been convinced that that might be true. But I've come to the conclusion that it's actually just all about balance. If I'm playing God of War, I enjoy the story because guess what? The game is simple, the story is complex, great. Okay, if the game is complex, there's a lot going on, like World of Warcraft. There's a lot going on. It might not be complicated, but there's a lot going on. So the story, I'm sorry, I don't got time for you. Like, in the, what is it, WoW Classic has an add-on where there's this voiceover mod, and I can keep playing the game while they're talking in the background? That's great, because now you're not stopping me from continuing from doing the thing. So that's like a happy medium of complicated game and thoughtful execution of storytelling to where you're not making me suddenly have to take a break when I'm like, I got a lot of things to do. Why are you making me take a break? And God of War is like, oh my God, I just got through like an insane battle. I'm so, my hands are tired. Okay, yeah, talk as long as you need to. I need to, I need to catch my breath, right? And, and I think, unfortunately, I didn't keep playing God of War every time they came out because I didn't have like the Playstations. Um, Pleb. Yeah, so, well, what I'm getting at is that the latest God of War, I was playing it on my PS5, and I was just like, this is great, this is great, this is great. Oh, it's very complicated. I have to craft, I have to find this stuff. I, I'm like, this wasn't God of War. I, and and I, the story's so great, I'm enjoying it, it's amazing, the action's amazing, but... At don't one point, my, don't talk. I didn't go back to the game like because don't there's too this. many puzzles. There's too much complication, and and so <laughs> if they would just dial it back a little bit, it would be a masterpiece. And I know that it's gotten awards for the story, and it, and it deserves them. But guess what? It doesn't need crafting. It doesn't need gathering. Those are not aspects of God of War that are necessary. Those are freaking checkboxes that the producers and, and the money bags, the suits, are trying to check off so that they can say, our game has this, 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 and this, and this. It is uh, unnecessary. And yeah. Skull and Bones is both complicated and trying to tell a story at the same time. You're like, yo, I just want to sail. I just want to shoot. I just want to steal. I just want to play. I want to be a pirate. Why are you making me stop and talk? Why am I going onto an island? And then there's like five square feet I can walk on. I can't even explore the whole island. And then I got to go away. Like it. It's weird. Did Why can my giant ship turn on a dime? With God of War, I'm I, talking I, about did he game complexity and did game just make a story well between Skull and Bones and God of War. Nat, to be fair, I don't think it was inadvertent because I don't think it was accidental. I'm pretty sure. Okay. It was okay. an intentional okay. link from God of the War. Reason, <laughs> there is a link here for me. 
is because God of War is a game that I love and really, and it's one of like the core memories of playing games as when I was young, mm-hmm. and and I wanted to play it all the way through, mm-hmm. but the game got too complicated, and so I just couldn't keep up with it. I was just I once I stopped playing, I was done. If I couldn't beat it in a in a couple play sessions, it's not going to happen because the complication is too high. No, not not before. Mm-hmm. You rage quit. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I just, I, I want to ask, as mm-hmm. someone who loves God of War and loves the new God of War, mm-hmm. do you think the game would be better without crafting? When I play God of War, I no, wish no, 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 no. You use pause. before, no, before he continues. Stop. I just want to know. Stop. We, uh, stop. Stop. We, stop. we blew past that two seconds of silence right there, so I'm trying to help <laughs> it out. <all> right? <laughs> it, I can see a world where there is no collectibles in the game. However, That's all I want. By doing that, you will remove all the possibility for the story to be revealed to you about the individual areas that you go to in the world. So, so Joe, I didn't say collectibles. I, I want to be clear because craftables. You said craftables, right? Craftables. I will say that very with, specifically because of the characters linked with the crafting. I would have to say yes. It has to have it because they are intrinsically linked with everything that you do and how you make it through certain fights. There are certain things that I think about that I've made because of Sindri and his, bro- I can't even think of his brother right now, but. Well, can I ask a genuine question? Yes. Have you played all of the God of Wars? Yes. And have they steadily gotten more complex? I would say that there is a very level of complexity moving up yes i so i would i would is, tend to say that it does that yes, each the, one added more complexity i yes, i think i would the say reason that. i ask that is because as, as nat and i have talked more and more especially in person we've discovered that we are very similar and that's why i had this argument that i think if i got to play each one one after another i'd be enjoying it just as much as nat because it, i would have maybe eased into it mm-hmm. right but I went from God of War 2 to modern God of War, and I was not ready for that transition. And I was just like, this is just, I, th- th- there's too much stuff for my on rails past experience. So, you know, I, w- it's I, like will later. That. I will answer that for you. The reason why it's supposed to feel different is because Kratos is different. Does, mm-hmm. uh, so my only thought on that is that. I don't think having crafting, specifically crafting, Mm -hmm. makes Kratos different when there are plenty of other things in the new God of War that help reinforce that Kratos is different. The whole scene with his kid. What are you talking about? (laughs) I know. No, I'm I'm, agreeing with you. I'm just saying. I'm just saying. I think my hypothesis would be, and I'll give an example of a game that I think does this perfectly, that has eliminated all of the fat in a game that I would argue feels in a lot of ways very similar in the enjoyment that you get out of executing it, but has none of the bloat. Okay. The new Doom games. Yeah. The new Doom games have absolutely no bloat. I'm not saying there is good. Nat, Nat, you listen to me. I'm not I'm saying. Listening. I've just never played the game. Oh, so okay. I have no frame of I reference. I see. That's, that's, no fair. that's fair. That's, that's fair. That's, that's fair. That's fair. That's <laughs> fair. You should go play them. They're, they're, okay. they're super fun. But essentially, I think that the new God of War is a phenomenal game however i also think that removing crafting doesn't make the game experience worse and could make the game experience 
even better than what it already is, which is amazing. I don't agree with I, that because I don't see how it makes the game better. Other than because you're going to be going to these places again. It's like filler, anyway. man. It's like filler in an anime. Some stuff is just not necessary to get the core enjoyment okay. of the game. Okay, let's say that you're right, right? Let's go ahead okay. and assume that you are not doing any of the collecting that's required for any for for the for the game, right? For crafting. No, 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 no. I, it should be very clear I am talking crafting, about crafting right? because okay. I think collecting stuff and having things that give to the story through collecting are good. And I would argue that taking out the actual crafting, but leaving the items in that give you those story through collecting is enough. It's the it's a, fact it, okay. that you have to craft. It's a choice then. I, I, I mean, go ahead, finish what you're saying. Sorry. All, all I'm getting at is that I don't. I agree that having things in the world that add to the story that you're talking about is wonderful. Mm -hmm. And I think rewarding the player for that with interesting tidbits of the story for a game like God of War, where the story is the game, mm -hmm. is what you should do. The idea of attaching gameplay mechanics to that exploration in my opinion, is bloat. I, I don't think it is necessary for the game to be good. The mechanics that you're doing, that you're executing, don't change. Only the statistics change. Right. And I don't think God of War, specifically God of War, as a game, needed that. I think that the story okay. is good enough to stand on its own, and I think minimizing the bloat so that you can experience and play through that story just through the sheer experience and knowledge that you gain by becoming better at the game to progress mm -hmm. is enough on its own. And adding things to the world to embrace that story more and encourage exploration is 100% good. I just don't think you need to tie those explor that exploration and collection to crafting. That's all I would say. It is a thing related to taste and what you would prefer to see in a game. For me, there is too much wrapped up inside of the people who are putting doing the forging in the game for me to say that it is not worthwhile, especially with the character progression that happens from the beginning to the end related to everything. That being said, I can't see God of War without the crafting system. I just don't like to think that every single thing that I kill has become a loot pinata, at least in that regard. Well, I don't even, I, I don't, well, I, no, 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 no. I think you're misunderstanding what I'm getting at here. Well, you're saying that, so I'm, I'm removing the aspect of you having to craft any of the armor pieces or any of the uh sigils or any of the runes or um yeah or sigils or runes that kratos gains through the game and putting them on monsters that you monsters or characters that you kill throughout the game because if you remove the crafting but not as a loot pinata i would i think that god of war could do it very similarly to a legacy of Cain or a Dark Souls where these things just exist in the world at point X or at time X and you get them then, right? So when you need X item, X item is your, like in the treasure hoard of the God that you beat, right? And so there there doesn't need to be multiple different items the only items in my opinion that should exist in god of war are the ones that make a functional difference to how you play outside of that statistic increases don't make a lot of sense for that game that game is a game about executing your abilities for the boss being awesome as kratos experiencing this story that is already wonderful 
right? Mm -hmm. And if you need to change your function, right? Or go from a, a sword to a whip or, or, or however you want to change the functionality, right? You unlock those by just getting the new weapon, right? There is no mm -hmm. crafting. It is just there. I'm not saying loot pinata like stuff just drops off of things randomly because, again, this game doesn't need the grind. It doesn't need a Path of Exile, loot pinata type of thing. I don't mean loot pinata as in like a random loot table. I'm, I okay. mean as in, in the sense that like, let's say that you're going on the quest and let's go ahead and stick with just the first game. And then I'll have another example for the second game. In the first game, you go on a quest of freeing the dragons from their curse because okay. they're, they're, they're dwarven brothers in, in truth. Going through the act of actually freeing all the brothers gives you the armor that they have they've crafted, and that's something that you wear throughout the time yeah. throughout the time afterwards. In this new form of the game, it wouldn't be that you are taking their stories and the and the uh, and the memories of what they've given you, and then bringing it back to a a brother who is also a dwarf and takes the stories and makes the armor it is now just a piece a chest piece that is on a dead dragon that used to be a dwarf and so your argument here is that it's just it's it's a difference that's 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 me oh, describing yeah. what the system would look like right in let me in long in long form and it is it is a taste thing totally understand where you're coming from in terms of wanting it to be a more refined and linear uh avenue but i feel that game was was made with the intention that you were going to go to all of these areas and and go through the act of crafting because crafting in itself is a sense of taking time to do some do create x or create y and it gravitates towards certain people and sometimes it doesn't to to others that's but reasonable and so, it, since i brought this up i feel like i ought to chime in finally uh-huh and and say that to me god of war is like a beautiful song where you know it's got just that constant flow right and the only issue with modern god of war is that it has prerequisites and those prerequisites are playing literally every single god of war ahead of time so that you are already capable as a player of keeping the pace up okay because when i jumped into god of war the latest there's new things like really complicated puzzles where I'm in this zone for way too long because I'm not used to this. And I'm like, I, I don't know where to go. Like, what, what, what am I missing? I'm missing something. And so the song has basically been put on pause. I've been listening to the same exact verse over and over and over again. And all of the awesomeness is lost on me because I'm, I'm stuck here. And I'm stuck here because I didn't know that these games were like this now. I, I haven't played the previous games to help me be trained to go through it at the right speed and that's where this whole like bloat idea comes from where it's like i want to go into it and be able to enjoy the song at the right pace but since i'm getting stuck crafting or i'm getting stuck on puzzles the game loses its intensity and its awesomeness uh, when you have those big downturns I, I, I will appreciate that that is your experience, but I remember being in, look, trying to open Pandora's box and going down the ladder for at least two and a half to five minutes, just so that the game can go ahead and get me from point A to point B. Was that in God of War 2? That was in God of War 2. Sorry, no, that was in God of War 1. The first one? Pandora's yeah, that was in the first one. one. I am remembering I think Pandora's so. box as well. Yeah. So I, I have a different experience with the puzzles and the experiences from the very beginning, from the very first games. Oh, However, no, that might have been that might have been God of War th uh, three. No, it's not three. Three is whenever no, he's killing. I, all I remember. I know God of War three was like all like had a ton of Pandora's box. 
No, that was the first one. Cause what, well, uh, sorry, it has Pandora's box because it reveals that whatever was left inside of Pandora's box when he opened it is the reason why all the gods are crazy. Well, yeah, I just can't just, remember that that the, the like biggest scene thing you're talking is, about. Why do I need to solve a puzzle in okay. this game? And, and like, so, it's... and so, I, so, I, and I will stop you there because the game has always had puzzles. And they've always been kind of gratuitous, but they've always they've always existed. And the ex- evolution from the very first three games, sorry, the first five games to this game is supposed to be the mark of it's a mark of maturity away from the game, the original version of the game into something that is more methodical and 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 nuanced and a little bit more time taking because it's supposed to describe the change of what has happened before and what kratos is now and how he goes about through the world at least so in my opinion it is not that is not fact that is not like what their intention was that is how i have interpreted it and i would i would say that that's an entirely reasonable and again i don't i don't I think Anthony, you could be entirely right. There are probably some puzzles that are overly, like, done in the new God of War. But again, I I wouldn't Lies. say that the puzzles <laughs> are the problem, in my opinion, or having puzzles is the problem. Although I could see how some puzzles would detract from somebody's experience if they get stuck somewhere. But I I still think that every game has something that it wants to excel at. It has a goal. It has a an arrow point at which it wants to travel with. And God of War, in my opinion, and this is where I will say, this is my opinion. God mm-hmm. of War excels in a story that is told through spectacle fighting. Mm. And you feel like you are... Yeah. Amazing. You, like yes. you feel like you take down gods. And my argument would be that I, as a developer, would want my game to highlight that that best aspect of God of War. And everything that I develop for that game should push that idea forward. And for me, at least, I don't know that... And puzzles, I feel, add downtime and they add immersion into that story, right? Mm-hmm. So I could see how puzzles could be there. I don't know that collecting arbitrary amounts of some material and specifically having to do that so that I can progress arbitrarily through the world based on how good my gear is at that point in time, I don't know that that particularly helps engross me in that idea of this is a story a a story told through spectacle fighting and the reason i say that is because i have played a ton of spectacle fighters that have no crafting and tell great stories and i think god of war used to do that more before they had any idea of crafting and I think the newest one, in my opinion, could take out crafting and simply be easily as good as it is, if not better, because they could have focused more or done more interesting mechanics outside of crafting with that time that they spent developing it. It helped immerse you in the world in a less arbitrary, uh, obtrusive way. So you make me see that like... In in any game, there's downtime, right? And crafting is a downtime mechanic. Storytelling is a downtime mechanic. Monster Hunter is great because there's a lot of stuff going on. It's a very complicated game. The story, you can skip. There's like not really a story there. So mm-hmm. the down, it it's all about balancing the thing you do well that is really fun and engaging and the downtime mechanic. So if you have both story and crafting and et cetera, like puzzles and, and all these other things that are all downtime detracting away from your awesome monster killing or your awesome flying simulation or your awesome, whatever it is that you're awesome at, you just, you're overloading. You're, you're over. It's not balanced. 
And that's why the initial thing I said was too much complication and too much story at the same time is skull and bones. And because they're trying to do all of it at the same time, it's just terrible. Yeah. Just do this mm. or do that. And then, and then if you succeed, start to bring it up, but in the same game. Because if you start to try to bring them together and you release it as a brand new game, where's your tutorial? Like, who's... This is one Who of the biggest things that, that, that... This is what people mess up on. I've complained about this probably before. Sea of Thieves is something that comes out and my mom wants to play it. My sisters play it. Uh, bon V, Eric's wife, wants to play it. But guess what? Some of these people have never played a game in their life. So a jumping puzzle is one of the hardest things ever to do because they haven't developed those mechanics. Absolutely. So why do you have that? You shouldn't have that in your game because your game is so, like, catered towards literally everybody, not towards gamers that have been gaming forever. Like, what, what are your prerequisites? I think that's a debate as to whether or not the, the communal, like skill base of gaming should be oh man i don't want to say it like that but should the communal level of gaming be set lower so that it, it is more inclusive where there are a lot of us who enjoy the game there's a there's a, a lot of us who have enjoyed these games up to a certain point in time and expect a certain level of engagement when we play those games and if we I, I don't know about you, but you've seen me play Sea of Thieves and you saw the amount of, oh, I'm done with this because it was I mean, not like, engaging. It's just like just like how we're talking about God of War. Sea of Thieves is a game where a jump puzzle shouldn't exist. Why? You don't. There's no reason for a jump puzzle to exist in Sea of Thieves. In Guild Wars 2, there are jump puzzles. Guess what? You don't have to do it, but it's True. there. And, right. and that's the good part. You don't have to do it. For frickin' Sea of Thieves, one of the biggest things and best things they've ever done is a pirate's life. You get to go and save Jack Sparrow, and, and you're literally in the Pirates of the Caribbean's next story, basically. That's so cool. But guess what? My friend can't enjoy it because they don't have those mechanics developed, so they can't jump to the next part of the story. And, and that's, just, that's just bad. You did a bad job. Like, you should not have done that. Also, also at one point, like one of us or two of us went into the zone for the battle of the boss. Nobody else could join them. It's over. Awesome. Like you just, you just can't. Um, like how do you, how do you make that mistake? Uh, uh, it's I, frustrating. I would say it, it, it's one of those things where there's this fine balance, and I would. A great series to watch is a guy on YouTube named Rasputin, uh, and or Rasputin, Rasputin. I don't know how he pronounces it, uh, but he has an amazing series called Gaming for a Non Gamer, where his wife, who has never played games before, he goes in, has her play classic games, and just kind of highlights some interesting things that he notices about her experience, and he doesn't help her. Uh, mm -hmm. for the most part so she kind of like stumbles through these new and old games and kind of notices what does a person who has never played a game before experience when they play a game and a very interesting series go watch it it's really cool he's a great youtuber mm -hmm. and he does a great job editing but on top of that i i i definitely see what anthony's saying like every game has this specialty thing that they kind of like focus and drive on and i definitely think that focusing on that and highlighting that aspect is really important and like you said skull and bones doesn't really do a, a good job of that now i would argue that for all it's worth the new god of war isn't imbalanced enough for it to be an amazing like a super super amazing game that you should play but i think it's interesting too that i i don't think they added crafting and i think nat's giving them the benefit of the doubt here mm -hmm. i don't know that i would say that they added crafting because they want you to experience more of the world i think i'm a little bit more cynical i think they added crafting because every game that comes out from a triple a developer adds crafting That's right crafting. now yeah and so I think 
Nat is has some rose colored glasses for the crafting uh the crafting and God of War. About. Don't know what And I about. I respect that and I don't think it detracts from the game enough to consider that even a downside of the game. The new God of War is amazing. The crafting while I would argue is not needed is not that the worst crafting system in the game or in in a game in, in, in a game yeah right but I think it's an interesting take of the AAA development cycle right now of salespeople as we discussed earlier and people that are moving money care a lot about how long you spend in a game yeah and yeah. I think crafting yeah. makes you spend more time in the game and therefore yeah. is added superficially to a large number of games that don't need it right comparatively to something like terraria or minecraft yeah. where crafting is the game one right? of the coolest parts about god of war that i experienced or re-experienced in a way but in a more epic way is just when kratos suddenly is like yeah we need to move this and he starts pushing and like it feels like the whole world is moving and you're just like oh my god i'm so yeah. strong and it's just it's so epic and that's just i want more and more and more of that and that's why i describe it like a song where it's like it's a song it hits some of these notes and then i don't get to those notes again and I haven't gotten to them fast enough. And because I haven't gotten to them fast enough, I didn't finish the game. And I want to finish the game. And is it me or is it the game? I don't know. I don't know. You will, you will finish the game whenever you when have When I the become time. a streamer, I will finish the game. When you have the time, you will finish the game. I promise you. It is worth the, it was worth the, the toil. But before, yeah, yeah. before Nat uh, hates us for bashing a great game by the way i just I want to put it out it. there i did not i want to say it's game. amazing i have just i have a creative thought, difference that's okay interesting notes it. i think is what I'm i would sad say that i didn't finish it okay. and i'm wondering if it's not my fault but with that <laughs> but i'm not saying it it's not my fault yeah are we gonna are we are we wrapping this up or are we moving on to shows i i i, 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 I think I yeah i i think i think mel i saw mel give the look as she walked by i i think might have to wrap it up but i want to eat it <laughs> we will do a show segment next time and i think what we'll do is instead of what we're looking forward to games because i think we'll have we've kind of covered february for games let's Pretty just make much. it the show segment next time we'll talk about some other mediums and talk about favorite uh, uh like upcoming shows we want to watch next week so if you're interested yeah. in more show stuff let's let's discuss that next week and we'll replace the what we're looking forward to with shows you need to watch and we'll cut into some of the gaming and talk about some cool shows because I, I think there are some that I, I want to talk about too that would kind of be cool that have come out recently that I've uh, watched a few episodes of that are really interesting and that'll be fun to talk about. So if you're interested, so tune in we, next week. Oh well, yeah. And before we forget, you can uh, find me at youtube.com slash at Borderman or whatever they do, and there's a link tree. I have a link tree. Maybe oh. we'll give it to Eric at some point for these. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to put all the host data so when Nat has his channel, I'll, I'll put it on the host <laughs> stuff. And when I have a channel, it, I'll put it in the host section of the uh, doobly-doo and the YouTube page. Uh, by the way, interesting note, if you didn't know, the thing down below, that's called the doobly-doo. Go like and subscribe in the doobly-doo and go to our channel and you can go see Borderman's channel is the only one up there as of this episode, but I'm hoping to have my page kind of finished and set up and with some stuff on it pretty soon. So, um, yeah, cool. we're doing the thing. We're becoming creators. Oh, oh we're doing, God. we're doing the shit, man. But we'll let Nat go eat. Bah! <laughs> thank you all for coming out appreciate it you guys listen to us babble about yes we will see you on the next one we'll see you on the next one peace Bye. Bye.